Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer and today I have a brand new guest and I don't think you will know him because this is the first time he's gracing our channel. He is a United States congressman, a Democrat and arguably one of the few Hindu Americans in the Congress and in the Senate. Without further ado, let's welcome our guest of the day, Congressman Raja Krishnamurti. Congressman Krishnamurti, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel, sir. Hey, Namaskaram. Thank you so much. And I hope everybody's doing well. Extremely well, sir. And it's my pleasure. Uh, I don't know if you remember the last time we met, you had come to the Silicon Valley and you had introduced yourself as an engineer, a BSME. And he said, you guys do the engineering and I do the BS in the capital. But uh, <laughs> that really stayed in my mind. And I, I saw that uh, here is a person who's got a lot of humor in him. And, and since then, you've risen very remarkably. Congratulations. And I think and I, I'm hoping for the best that you will be back in uh, Congress in uh, come November. And, and as we thread through this conversation, first, I would like you to talk about your coming to America and how you got onto the Democratic Party. Take it away, sir. Sure. Uh, so first of all, I was born in India. I was born in New Delhi. And, um, you know, basically my uh, parents came to the United States and I uh, immigrated when I was three months old. And, um, you know, things were going just great until suddenly in the recession of 1973 in Buffalo, New York, where my father was studying engineering, things did not go well. He lost his income, but thanks to the generosity and goodness of the American people and his government, we were allowed to move into public housing and food stamps spent about half of my early childhood in those public relief programs. Uh, but thanks to my father's hard work, he finished his studies and then landed an excellent job in, of all places, Peoria, Illinois, which uh, for your viewers is roughly three hours south of Chicago, Illinois, by car. It's in the center of uh, Illinois. And that's really where the golden period of our lives began. Uh, because that's really where we entered the middle class. And uh, pretty much every night at the dinner table, my father would say, you know, think of the greatness of this country and whatever the two of you do, my brother and me, just make sure that you uh, make sure this country is, is there for the next families who need it. And so that became the North Star of my personal compass, my personal mantra, if you wish. My brother went off to medical school and is now a doctor and professor of medicine at the University of Chicago. I went a different route. I went to Princeton University, then Harvard Law School, then came back and I uh, practiced law, became a partner at a law firm. And then I uh, entered government. I helped to start the anti-corruption unit of the Illinois Attorney General's office. And then I became deputy treasurer of our state. Along the way, I served as Barack Obama's issues director for his US Senate campaign. We all know what happened with him. And then later on, I went back to the private sector, ran a small business, and then ran for this position and won in 2016. So here I am. My life has come full circle where I can pursue that mission statement that was given to me by my parents, which is try to make sure this country is there for the next families who need it. And so that guides me every day. And now I'm in my third term, sixth year, uh, representing the suburbs of Chicago in the U.S. Congress in Washington, D.C., and it's the honor of my lifetime to do so. Congressman Krishnamurti, you are very modest. You were the valedictorian in your high school. You graduated summa cum laude from an Ivy League institution. You're being very modest, sir. I mean, I'm sure when your parents saw you come through with such flying colors and academics, and then you went to the one of the best law colleges you can ask for in the world, uh, that, you know, here's a man who really, really is cut out for big things. And, and yours, I must tell you, that the Howdy Modi event that took place in Texas, there were a lot of Republicans, but you also saw Congressman Raja Krishnamurti as part of that group. There were very few Democrats. I mean, I hate to say that when there was a prime minister of India visiting, that this looked like a bit of a partisan affair. That's how I saw it. I'm independent uh, Congressman Krishnamurti, but I wanted to mention that you were there. And, 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 and I tip my hat to you for that, because these days, 
politics has become very partisan, sir. And also, I just want to tell our viewers that currently, Congressman Krishnamurti serves on the House Oversight Committee and also on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. And I believe it is as part of this that he went with Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan. Walk us through that experience because there was like, will she, won't she, will she, won't she? And finally, <laughs> the Iron Lady ends up the lands in, in Taipei. Walk us through that experience for us. And, and how did you feel the whole trip was? Well, we, we went to Taiwan for two reasons. One is we cannot allow what happened in Ukraine to happen in Taiwan. And so we have to stand by our partners, our friends, our allies in the region to prevent uh, aggression and to resist aggression from the Chinese Communist Party in particular. And two, you know, we recently passed a major piece of legislation which has become law called the CHIPS Act, which is meant to incentivize the production and manufacturing of semiconductor chips here in the United States. And so we put on our salesperson caps and went to Taiwan and Japan and Korea and Malaysia and Singapore to get people excited about manufacturing these chips in the US. And I'm, I'm glad to say that the Taiwanese in particular pledged to invest $17 billion in manufacturing these vital components here in the US. So there was both a uh, security component to our trip, but also an economic and commercial one too. Congressman Krishnamurti, I have some questions on the CHIPS Act, uh, but I want to defer that. First, I would like to know a little bit more about your family, sir, and maybe you can kind of walk us through a little bit of your family, and then we'll go on to CHIPS Act, because I'm a semiconductor person. I have a few questions, so we can get into a little bit of depth into that. Take it away, sir. Sure. Well, my parents are of uh, Tamil heritage. Uh, I'm the first uh, Tamil American ever in the U.S. Congress. Um, they immigrated from the south, from uh, Tamil Nadu to Delhi, uh, which is where they um, met and got married. Much of their family actually lives in Delhi. And, uh, and then basically that's where I was born. I was actually born in what was then called Wellington Hospital. I think now it's called Ram Lohaya Hospital in Delhi. And, you know, I was joking uh, with somebody that, you know, the Prime Minister's initiative is make in India and so I said that uh, I was made in India too. Uh, and so uh, I'm, I'm, I, I also like to joke that Indian Americans are perhaps uh, India's greatest export. And as you know, Indian Americans, I, I think that you are one of them, you know, have done so well in the US. There are more than 4 million and they are the fastest growing ethnic minority here. They're, they're the most prosperous and most well-educated. Uh, but now, obviously, it's also our chance, our opportunity to give back to this great country. And so I'm just so honored to be able to do so. And thank you for your kind compliments. I have to say they were because of the prayers. Um, any achievements that I have is because of the prayers and blessings of my parents and my grandparents and relatives. Um, I'm just uh, the beneficiary of their good good uh, good deeds their karma and their good blessings congressman krishnamurti let's take a quick look at the chips act now if uh, if i remember correctly congressman krishnamurti united states made a conscious decision and not to be in the fab business you know at, at, a, at some point of time even ibm was having its own fab uh, some of the big companies had their own fabs and there was a conscious decision that was made that uh, it is too expensive to run fabs here so it got moved it got moved to taiwan it got moved a little bit to uh, samsung and so on and so forth now this government and it's very credible i mean i tip my hat to the government for doing this because it's a big investment and you know, i think the numbers i'm hearing started at 40 billion and it's going to about 280 billion uh, kind of give us a little bit 20000 foot level of how this money is going to be spent uh, are you going to have you know encourage people uh, to build their fabs from ground up here or is there going to be some sort of a, a tmc uh, agreement where tmc is also getting some skin in the game uh, kind of walk us a little bit through that uh, vision of CHIPS Act, sir. Well, you're correct that for a long time, we decided that it was okay to manufacture semiconductor chips in other countries, especially places like Taiwan and um, other uh, destinations. But what we found, especially during the pandemic, 
is that the supply chains got so disrupted that we ended up with a shortage of these vital components for everything from cars to appliances to uh, you name it. And so because of that, there was a real push to, you know, basically onshore the production of these chips to the United States. And so what does this chips bill do? It basically incentivizes American companies as well as foreign companies to come here and make their chips. So for instance, TSMC, I think you were referring to them. They are the world's largest fabricator of semiconductor chips. They're based in Taiwan, which is primarily where their facilities are. They are planning to come to the United States and build a lot of those chips here to service the local market. And the same is true with some European companies and now with American companies who were otherwise thinking about going abroad to manufacture their chips. So uh, we are really excited about this. It not only uh, boosts our economy, but it quite frankly, it boosts our security. Absolutely. Congressman Krishnamurthy, having been in the semiconductor industry for a long time, I can tell you, sir, this industry is one of the biggest multiplier of jobs because there are so many requirements. You'll see all these ancillary units coming up and, and that in turn starts, you know, kickstarting a lot of services business. I would not uh, hesitate to say for one job in a semiconductor fab, you're probably going to get 10 jobs because of the fact that there is so much of complexity involved. This is high science and in United States is, you know, basically the cutting edge in terms of technology. And I'm really, really hoping, Congressman Krishnamurthy, that the United States start, you know, uh, putting a lead between itself and the other countries who plainly, as far as I'm concerned, I'm an inventor in a previous life, that, you know, intellectual property is not respected as much as it should. And this is one way to, you know, address this problem. Um, so thank you so much for clarifying that. A real quick look at how well do you think Taiwan is positioned to defend itself, assuming that there is a surprise onslaught. I'm sure U.S. will come to their help. But how do you see the morale in Taiwan? How prepared are they in your opinion, sir? Well, maybe I'll set the scene first, which is that Unfortunately, the People's Republic of China, run by the Chinese Communist Party and Chairman Xi, have really thrown their elbows in their neighborhood militarily, uh, whether it's in the South China Sea, and we're talking about with neighbors like Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, or with regard to, of course, Taiwan, whether it's cracked down on democracy in Hong Kong, or even uh, thrown its elbows at India, on its uh, India's Northeast borders, the People's Republic of China, unfortunately, is violating a lot of international norms with how you resolve your disputes. At the end of the day, these disputes must be resolved peacefully, not by aggression and not by the use of force or coercion. And so, unfortunately, the People's Republic of China is not playing by those rules. So we have to do everything we can to help our neighbors and friends and allies in the region prepare for any type of aggression and prepare their self-defense, and that includes Taiwan. You should know that under the Taiwan Relations Act, we are legally bound to help to uh, supply equipment to Taiwan for its self-defense. I think Taiwan has done a lot to prepare itself, but it needs to do more. And we've learned a lot uh, even from Russia's aggression against Ukraine in terms of the types of equipment that Taiwan requires. Um, although uh, at the end of the day, we want peace. We want peace and stability. We want a region where the neighbors respect each other and where commerce can flow freely. And that's why I'm so supportive of, for instance, the Quad uh, involving India, the US, Australia, and Japan, as well as other initiatives where we can create an international rules-based order. That is the name of the game. And, and, and Congressman Krishnamurti, you may have noticed that for the first time, India voted against Russia in the United Nations yesterday. So the tide is turning. I think that, uh, look, the relationship between the US and India is strong, it is deep, it is wide, and it will grow wider in, in the nature of its cooperation. I have no doubt that uh, we will um, align more and more on numerous initiatives. 
but this one is really important in terms of um, while I understand uh, India's situation relative to Russia, I hope that uh, we can partner together in ways that increase our mutual security long term. And certainly in the Indo-Pacific region, we have no choice but to make sure that democracies uh, and, and those countries that wish to observe the rules-based order are able to cooperate with each other. Thank you very much, Congressman Krishnamurti. And viewers, I might tell you that Congressman Krishnamurti is one of the few uh, politicians from the United States who gave a statement condemning the killing of Kanayala. So thank you very much, sir. That, that was that meant a lot because there was, uh, you know, the narrative was going one way and you helped set right at least some of it. And, and it was a pleasure and honor talking to you, uh, Congressman Krishnamurti. It's my hope that you'll come back again and we can talk about in depth on a few weighty issues because United States is going through a really difficult period post COVID. You know, we are all having to pick up our lives and start again. Thank you very much once again, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you so much.